so I've talked a little bit about this before, but I want to show you some ideas and some concepts when it comes to color saturation boosting. And shots like this, um, this is something I did in White Sands, New Mexico with Chelsea. Shots like this really showcase why we sometimes want to do color saturation boosting in different ways. Okay. Now, really, really targeting something like with a selection is, is fine as well. Um, but we're not going to talk about that necessarily. We're going to talk about some general concepts because on something like this, where the color saturation to me is very important. In other words, where we do it and where we don't is very important. Um, even on regular shots, quote unquote, something that doesn't have extreme saturation differences like this one does, different ways to boost saturation can be very, very important. Now, let me explain what I mean by all of that. In this shot, we have the white sand, which is gypsum, actually, in White Sands, New Mexico, one of my favorite places to shoot. The white sand has a nominal amount of color saturation to it. It's barely any color at all. And in this case, Chelsea is wearing a black outfit, which has also very minimal saturation. However, the blue sky and her tan tone, as well as her blonde hair, has color saturation. So to me, this is what I would call a high contrast color saturation situation, right? In other words, the, the, the saturation itself is high contrast. Now, there's ways of controlling that. There's saturation compression and saturation contrast boosting, which are different methods. We're not going to do that necessarily today, but I want to show you some demonstrations. Now, let's say we want to add, you know, saturation. Well, obviously, you might think, hey, let's put out an adjustment layer of hue and saturation. We have a saturation adjustment slider here, and we can increase it. Fantastic. Now that does work. Don't get me wrong. And now we've inc increased saturation, in my opinion, too much on this shot, but that's kind of the point of the demo. In fact, to take it up even higher, let's put the saturation all the way. So as you can see, we never really want to do this, but we boosted the saturation all the way. And as you can tell, we are increasing saturation, not only on the white gypsum, we're increasing saturation on the black outfit, which is hard to see on the video, I know. Okay, and of course, we're bringing out color artifacting uh, all over the shadows and everything like that. So you would never really do this. But the thing is, even if you boost, you know, 28, which now looks better from this to this, right, you're still boosting color in here. In other words, in the gypsum, in the non-saturated areas. So if you want to boost color a whole lot, like you want to do something like this, okay, for some reason, you are bringing out artifacting in the non-saturated areas. In other words, you're boosting uh, pixels that are in there that do have color information, they have hue information and a little bit of saturation information, and you're expanding that and you're increasing that. And by doing that, you're losing the neutrality of that. And that can come um, can become a problem in a couple of different ways. Later in your workflow, as you're adding uh, other other elements of color layering, of color grading or anything like that, that, that boosting can be a problem. You might also do things below your saturation layer that when you add a saturation layer and really peg the saturation, because that's what you want, you're going to bring out color where you don't want it. Like right now, I know it's going to be hard to see on the video, but right now this gypsum has a yellow tone to it because naturally it does. And I've added way too much saturation and I've killed that. Other way it can fall apart on you is when you go to print an image, because then that little color boosting that's in there that you barely see might look yellow in the print. Okay, it depends on the on, on how you print it and where you print it and all that. But point is, I like color to be where I want it to be and not where I don't within reason. Okay, one thing that's not a good idea, in my opinion, is to try to select all the gypsum and remove all the color. That's going to look really fake. You don't want to remove all the saturation. A couple of things we can do. One, leave the hue and saturation layer exactly where it is and change its blend mode from normal to color. Okay, you can barely see the difference there, but it does decrease the amount of saturation being added to the neutral areas. It's very, I mean, on video, it's going to be very difficult to see. It's so subtle, but I do recommend that you do this demo on your own and you'll see the differences between normal and color. Okay, so color is like first line of defense to do that. Now, you might be aware probably anyway, of another adjustment layer called Vibrance. And on Vibrance, you'll know that there's a Vibrance adjustment slider and there's another saturation slider, which is particularly interesting. People have asked me about that all the time. And the other saturation slider, this one, increases saturation in a slightly different way. Let's go back to 45, okay? Again, I recommend that you do these demos on your own. This saturation slider has been tailored, if you will, by Adobe to kind of keep human skin tones, which is going to be that range between like uh, reddish pink all the way through greenish yellow. 
Um, in terms of hue angle, okay, now the, 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 the brightness of it up and down, it, it varies a lot, um, obviously, but still human skin tone is, is deemed by Adobe to be roughly around pink to yellow green. Okay. Now when you add 45 saturation with this saturation slider, it does kind of tone down how much the skin tones get boosted. This is great when you have a subject in a colorful environment or something like this, where the more you boost it, the skin tones tend to not go completely out of whack uh, as fast. It's just an interesting thing that it does. Second, we have vibrance itself, which boosts color saturation in a very subtle way. Cause you notice how when I boost it even to a hundred percent, okay, it still tends to favor the saturated areas and not so much the others. But you know what? You can put this one on color blend mode as well. And that's gonna really keep things in check. Again, I encourage you to do these demos on your own, but there's a, a saturation boost of 45 on color blend mode and our neutral areas are not being boosted, barely, barely being boosted. And of course on vibrance, I can make it hundred percent and I get a beautiful color boost without really affecting the neutral areas at all. So the takeaways here, obviously are pretty straightforward. I just want to give you the demos. You can use hue and saturation, of course, and you can use the vibrance adjustment layer put them on color blend mode. And overall, even on situations where you don't have a lot of extreme saturation contrast like here, um, I think you're gonna have a better result when you boost saturation. You're gonna have more pleasing results. Cause like on this shot, I did want really, really intense blue and really, really intense skin tones. And I want to do it quickly without any hard mass that, that might end up looking fake if I do it wrong. I wanted just kind of a smart way to do it. And whenever I see a situation like that, where there's a lot of color somewhere and a bunch of neutral areas, the first thing I think about is color blend mode and potentially vibrance. Now, there's a lot of different reasons why you might use the hue and saturation layer um, in conjunction with something else. There's a reason why you might want to use this saturation layer. In general, just play with it. Play with it until you get something that you like. Try the different methods. Because when I first started doing the vibrance layer, I decided that the saturation slider on here was just redundant. This was years ago and I just never used it. I always just use vibrance. And then one day I found out on a, on a YouTube video how that saturation slider works. I did some tests and I realized, oh, okay. So really in the end, there's other ways, but the easiest three ways are gonna be hue and saturation and then the vibrance one as well because it has another hue and satura uh, saturation slider and a vibrance slider and try putting both of them on color blend mode. You might be surprised at the kind of color boosting you can get without overdoing it.